Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up everyone, Matt here. I guarantee at some point in the future when you're building your AppSheet app, you'll get to a point to where you'll wanna take the information that your user has entered and immediately push that into the cloud. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do it. Let's do it. So I have a sample app here that I'm going to release, put on my profile. I'll put a link down below that I'm going to use to demonstrate how this works. It's built off of the uh, alternative order capture sample app that I built before. If you want to see how that was made, check the link up above. So the idea that I've got with this app, right, is I've got an order that I'm building. I can add products to it, this, that, and whatever that I want to do, and then I can click this completion button to mark this order as complete. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna take over that button. When somebody pushes that complete button, I want all of this sort of information to be pushed to the cloud. Because maybe, you know, like it, it, just, it didn't happen as fast as I needed to, but I wanna get it out immediately. So what do I do? Okay, so well, this action is already an action. And so if I just go and I find it, right, this little checkbox is this check mark here. Um, and so what I gotta do is I need to change this. So this action is the actual thing that changes the order status to complete. What I really need to do is I need to change that action that's visible from the actual action that makes the change to a group action. That way I can throw another thing inside it. So what I'll do is I'll copy this and then change this to a stack status complete, right? And then so the do this becomes grouped, execute a sequence of actions. And then what I wanna do is I wanna take that original action, this one, and put it in that stack. Uh, but first what I'll do is I'll kinda clean up this original action. So I gotta hide this, we don't need to see it anymore. So like, I'll get rid of this, um, I will make this do not display. I'll turn off this confirmation. I will also remove this. Eh, you could leave that in, I guess, if you wanted. Doesn't matter. It doesn't hurt anything to leave it there. Uh, the important thing to do, though, is to do not display your original action that does whatever it was doing. And then take that and put that inside your stack action that you've made so that it changes it, so it does the thing that you originally told it to do, it does that first. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw another action into the mix. This is really the meat and potatoes and the key that makes everything work. So in order to force a sync, there's a little bit of code that you throw at the end of any deep link formula. So those link to row or link to view, those formulas that you use to kind of take your user somewhere else in your, in your app, you can throw a little bit of code at the end of that that it tells the system that when it goes to that place, it needs to make sure everything's updated. So let's first figure out where we want to go. Um, so like I'm here in this building order view. And when I press this complete button, then um, where do I want to be taken? Like, where do I want the user to go? That's the first thing that you got to figure out. Um, so, you know, I could drop them on the product table. Um, if I go back to my UX, I can show you. So I've got this building and this new. So this new one's a form. So I don't want to drop them to there. Um, the thing that I think I will do is I will drop them into the detail view of the order that they just made. But I, it, it can't be this view because this is only for the building orders. So I've got to go to the regular detail view for the order table. So. I'll just come down here, find my order details, right? This is the root view, and I'll just copy the name of it. And now we go make the action. So back in behavior, make a new action. It lives on the order table, the original place where I need it to execute. And so this is I'm gonna call sync, and this will be order complete, right? And the uh, do this is I want to go to another view within this app. And the target is a link to row because I'm trying to view this order in 
that view, just like that. So this is your traditional deep link formula where I say, I wanna view this record in that view, right? Okay, so the thing that you do to make all of this force sync type stuff work is you throw a little bit of code right at the end of this, right here. Um, and I will throw this code into the uh, description down below so that you can copy it. Uh, and I highly suggest that you put it into your snippets if you have the appsheettraining.com sidebar. Uh, and yeah, so you see with this little bit of code here, this and, at, and now, whatever, that is all that it takes to cause the system to force sync. And so I'll save this. I'll kind of clean up this. I don't need to see this. I like to use this little tweet thing for that. Um, and then I'm gonna, so I'm done with this and I stick that inside my stack after the original action that I had. So when I push this button now, what happens is that it, first thing it does is it changes the status of the order to complete. That does the actual thing that I needed it to do, right? And then it syncs the order. It takes me to view the record that I was just, that I just completed in a different view right? But when I go to that view, it's updating the data. Um, so if I save all of this now, and we go back and we test this, you can see what this looks like. So I'm over here on the uh, building order, right? Maybe I add in a few more things so that I've got those stacked up and I hit go. There we go. So immediately the app starts syncing the data and it's pushed to the cloud. This is a fantastic way where you can completely avoid a whole bunch of problems of like people not uploading their data. Uh, users are terrible about pushing that sync button. Uh, they will finish doing what they do and may, if they're on a mobile device, they'll close the app. They won't even think about pushing the sync button and getting that stuff to the cloud. Or if they're on, uh, like they're using the web browser, they do the same thing. They finish what they're doing, cool, done. Close the browser, close the tab. Unfortunately, those syncs need to get into the cloud. By using this technique, where you throw that little bit of code at the end, it immediately starts the sync process, which taps into some Pavlovian things that we as humans who exist in the 21st century have been conditioned all our lives for. What I'm talking about here is a progress bar. All of our lives, we have been exposed to various progress bars, and we now know that we generally need to wait for these progress bars to finish. And so when you force a sync like that and it causes that little progress bar to appear, you're tapping into the psychology of, of, of people where they'll see the progress bar go, oh, I need to wait for this. And they'll wait for it to finish, and then when it's done, then they'll close the app. So this is a fantastic way that you can avoid a whole bunch of problems. It's really simple. It just takes that one little bit of code that you got to throw inside this little bit right here. And like I said, I'll throw that down in the description below. I hope this has been educational for you. I hope it's helped you. I do appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by. I'll see you in the community.